Blanks Creek, named for one of the many southwestern mammals dependent on healthy freshwater systems, the bobcat. For millennia, the ephemeral nature of water in the arid west has dictated where life can survive and flourish. The wild and free creeks and rivers naturally slow and spread, recharging precious groundwater and creating habitat corridors known as riparian areas. But humans have severely altered the flow of fresh water through dams, irrigation channels, ranching, mining, development, and fire suppression. The result? Watersheds that can be unrecognizable from what they once were. In light of historic degradation of riparian areas, do humans have an obligation to assist and direct these ecologically significant areas back to what they once were through the practice of restoration? Imagine what Lynx Creek might have looked like 150 years ago before the first Europeans moved west in their search for gold. Imagine if Sam Miller and his band of prospectors overlooked Lynx Creek and allowed natural cycles of fire, flood, and erosion to persist. What does a healthy and historically accurate riparian area of the Central Highlands look like? Perhaps cottonwoods, ten feet in diameter. Willow stands wisping in the wind. Beavers gather logs and twigs to build their dams. Spaced out conifers allowing sunshine to warm the granite boulders along the creek. Migratory bird songs resting in the air. Cool, deep water teeming with fish. Freshwater ecosystems like Lynx Creek, unaltered, are the most biologically diverse habitats in the entire Southwest. But Sam Miller did establish a mine on Lynx Creek, near the site of the Highland Center for Natural History today. Ranchers and miners of the past, and commercial and housing developments today, have had impacts on the Lynx Creek riparian area. Follow the trails at the Highland Center and you will see dams, irrigation channels, and clear-cut pine forests, evidence of mining and development along Lynx Creek. The result is habitat loss for plants and animals and increased cycles of erosion and unnatural flooding patterns. You will also notice that fire has not touched this area due to a century of fire suppression strategies and current human safety concerns. What if humans let fire run its course? Pine forests would be less dense, allowing for natural meadows and sunny riparian areas along the creek. The reality is, for as long as we're here, we will work hard to prevent a fire moving through this area uncontrolled. The changes of the past and habitat alterations are a done deal. So how can we mimic fire and other natural processes in order to improve the quality of the riparian area? The Highland Center for Natural History and the Prescott National Forest are working together with funds provided by the Yavapai County Resource Advisory Committee to direct restoration efforts on a five-acre stretch of a Lynx Creek tributary. During your visit, you will experience some of the current strategies implemented. Look closely along this tributary of Lynx Creek. What trees do you see? Ponderosas and junipers? These trees, while both common and ecologically important, are not what we call obligate riparian trees, trees that can only be found near water. These woodland trees, in increased density compared to the past, 
increased competition for woody riparian species, leading to decreased biodiversity. Additionally, most riparian species are considered pioneer species, meaning they typically establish in areas after a disturbance like fire or flood. For restoration, our goal is to knock down some of the trees in order to mimic natural disturbances, creating openings and reducing competition for riparian woody species, while also creating a window to recruit these pioneer species. Best practices in restoration include using the living and non-living materials you have available to you at the specific location, rather than bringing in materials from other sites. Therefore, another restoration strategy is to use the felled trees to create check dams perpendicular to the flow. By stabilizing these logs, sediment and debris will build up, mimicking natural dams of the past, slowing and spreading the water. This will contribute slightly to raising the water table create rich sediment for riparian plants to establish while decreasing erosion. Additionally, this strategy will create pooling habitat and microclimates, increasing biodiversity. The next strategy is to plant the area with desired and historically accurate woody and non-woody riparian plants. The best practice is to transplant individual willows and cottonwoods from the surrounding Prescott National Forest land so as to reduce any risk associated with bringing in invasive species. Similarly, seeds will be scattered for sedge sedges, cattails, and water-loving grasses. These will be harvested from local plants. The most important restoration strategy of them all is monitoring. The natural cycles of creeks and rivers, as well as ecological systems in general, are complex. There are many factors that impact the flow and health of a freshwater ecosystem. The timeline of any given restoration project can only be estimated. The intended and unintended consequences are broad. Therefore, one of the best things we can do is monitor the progression of change over time in order to better inform restoration efforts of the future. At certain locations on the trails, you will encounter photo monitoring stations. We encourage visitors to snap a picture and share it with our research team. This is a simple way for all of us to engage in the monitoring process. In the end, the alterations to the land that humans have made and perpetuated at Lynx Creek and elsewhere may run so deep that restoration efforts will fail or that improvements will take another hundred or thousands of years. However, when we imagine what was and compare to what is, we may feel obligated to attempt riparian restoration anyway. Using current strategies and accepting the risk of failure, we push on, reminding ourselves that every decision we make regarding land use affects our waterways and hoping that those decisions are in the best interest of riparian health. After all, from the bobcat to us humans, a healthy riparian area means a better life for all residing in the Arizona Central Highlands.